Among all of the demons Yusuke has come across in Yu Yu Hakusho, none were quite like Kurama. The once powerful bandit king severely injured and forced to find refuge in the human world. Born and raised by his human mother, Shiori, who he had once planned to leave along with the rest of the human world. When introduced to Hiei and Kuwabara, it's standard shonen fighting, communicating through violence. However, as Yusuke meets Chroma, there's no desire for any violence or need to prove anything to Yusuke. More than willing to give back the item he had stolen without any fight, on the condition that he wants to save Shiori. Showing his deep love he's grown for his human mother despite his original plan to leave the human world. Attempting to use the demon mirror to give his own life in order to save his mother's. Before being thankfully saved by Yusuke, deepening both of the characters and starting their journey together. Unlike the other members of Yusuke's team, Kurama and Tim never fought throughout the entirety of the anime. Yusuke fights literally everyone, friend or foe, throughout the series, fighting Kiei in the episode Keiko in Peril and during the Black Tape arc, and always fighting with Kuwabara playfully or not so playfully. Every dynamic between the four is full of yelling or arguing minus Kurum. Now this doesn't take away from the show or diminish the use of the narrative device to show that despite how much they argue, they still care for each other, but it does help Kurama stand out amongst the already beloved characters in the series. Often acting as the mediator, becoming a good friend to Kuwabara, especially after Yusuke and Yie go to the demon realm, a consistent voice of reason for Yusuke and one of the only people Hiei trusts. This aspect of his character makes Kurama different, what makes him interesting is the overall complexity of his character. He is aesthetically pretty, designed in a way that leads the audience to make assumptions surrounding his character. With long red hair, big green eyes, and often staying covered up, he's soft-spoken and, at least in the manga, is commonly mistaken for a woman. And where are you headed to? Nowhere, you know. So, guess that's your girlfriend there? You go into a motel? <laughs> He's a man, okay? And a tough one! No, no way! Are, Are you sure, sure? Mara? I know, maybe he's a... Well, no one told me you swung that way. Hey, look, I like girls, okay? And he's just, he's got delicate features! Also, he fights with plants, roses in particular. Using and transforming them into inventive and deadly weapons, Despite this, in his moniker as Bandit King, other demons mock him for his use of plants in battle. <laughs> you look so peaceful with your little flowers. Though when he reveals his true form, both Yusuke and Kuwabara are left confused. Regardless of what his teammates and other demons think of him, Kurama is shown to be the most cruel of all. His opponent who attempted to leverage his mother as a weapon was left with a slow-moving death plan them, luring him into a false sense of security with his feminine appearance and flowery fightings, much less flashy and on the nose compared to the likes of Hiei. Despite his cruelty, he displays compassion and a deep full of emotion regarding conflict in general, giving Toya a second chance with the idea he can potentially create a better life for himself resembling the one Kurama has made. His appearance is often used for cheap remarks or to denounce his abilities. You can see this played out in his first meeting with Karasu, a member of Team Decoro. As they actually fight, Karasu tears Kurama apart with a series of demon bombs, basking on the violence. Karasu being depicted as a predator and objectifying Kurama. Detailing how he loves killing things, Kurama of course being the thing in the situation. There's an odd underlining sexual threat against Kurama throughout their meetings, simultaneously belittling and objectifying him, as well as praising his physical and aesthetic attributes, attempting to both emotionally and mentally toy and manipulate Kurama. Despite the brutal attacks, pushed to the end, Kurama ends up defeating the predator with a life plan. There's a lot in regards to this relationship you could talk about, from decade-long fanfiction rabbit holes to it being the most popular fight or a pivotal point in the growth of his popularity. The main takeaway for me is that using the feminine traits he's mocked or belittled for to overcome someone who preys on those very traits. 
Beyond the Dark Tournament arc, there is a bit more exploration to his character, further diving into his intelligence, demon past, and arguably his most violent display. In the Black Tape arc, he's the sole survivor against a fellow classmate turned antagonist, outsmarting him in his own domain with his own rule set, whereas CA tries to overpower the rules and has his soul stolen. A lot of people are not into this, and I understand why, but it doesn't really bother me. After defeating Game Master, you can see the morning in Karama, the consequence of this being deeper than almost any fight he's taken on before. Not ending his own life, but being forced to take the life of someone a child nonetheless. Despite this, the cruelty in Karama is high. The fact is that he'd do it as many times as needed if there was a greater good at stake. There's no fight that is a better example of this than against Koromei, who's had his body taken over by Elder Tagore. He's managed to survive the Dark Tournament arc and take over the weaker Gourmet spot. Just to explain real quick, Gourmet was a cannibal who gained the power of people he would eat, one of the more grotesque abilities and displays in Yu Yu Hakusho for sure. Grauma leaves him in a sinning tree, which makes him relive his worst fears for eternity. This handful of battles being some of the hardest on any character in the entire series showing the ocean of emotion and duality that Kurama possesses, whereas Yusuke and Kuwabara have strong human codes that are rather blunt. And while Kiei has appeared to be callous, Kiei is often just neutral or even good. Once again, not that this means those characters are bad or less complex, I'll go more into depth about them in later videos, so stay tuned for that. This duality makes him stand out. The feminine and androgynous nature making him alluring only to hide the demon underneath. Fitting his fox demons are often portrayed as tricksters or shapeshifters. Not adhering to the stereotypical gender traits or following patterns of his contemporaries, as well as not being intimidated by his enemy. I was looking into making this video and read a lot of quotes discussing how Tagashi apparently had something in mind for EAX Karama or at least acknowledged in a joking way that it exists. I couldn't find an actual quote or translation about this, so I'm not going to really read into that unless there's a scan or some actual evidence. I stumbled across the Tumblr, Yu Yu Show Forever, and read this post. I'm gonna be honest, I only heard this rumor about Togashi intending them to be a couple in English forums back in the 2000s. No one has ever seen a single piece of this purported interview. It exists only in headcanon. Being an assiduous reader of Jump magazines since the 90s, V Jump and Shonen Jump, I can tell the rare times Togashi has given interviews, he's always said he had no aim involved when he began drawing high. On the contrary, he intended Kurama to be popular from the beginning. I think people mistook Kuramax High for another story. Togashi did present to Jump a project called Trouble Quartet which had Yaoi involved, that particular one was rejected by the editors. In Yashar and Dupan, he was asked if he'd had any demands from the editorial department, to which he replied that only the storyline about the YYH characters being actors and having other names was turned down. So after doing a little bit of my own research and not being able to find anything, I'm not going to read into it too much despite this. Despite this, the series does have a canon paired duo and since we and eats. I do think it's interesting to analyze Kuroma and his relationship with allies and enemies like Karsu in this light. Tagashi was also submitting stories with queer characters in it before this, so I don't think it's that far of a stretch at the same time. His ability to take feminine traits and prove them powerful, rejecting stereotypical masculinity always made him stand out to me, being supposedly weak while simultaneously being one of the strongest fighters in the anime, as well as possessing an ocean of emotion and intelligence. Using stereotypically feminine attributes seen as weak in the context of demons killing each other to reclaim and defend the better life he's found at his most vulnerable. 